नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू एन लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम माई नेम इज तनवी खुराना एंड ऑल द टेंथ क्लास स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू स्टडी कार्बन एंड इट्स कंपाउंड विद आस इन दिस केमिस्ट्री क्लास दिस इज द फिफ्थ पार्ट ऑफ द सेम टॉपिक इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन द अर्लियर पार्ट प्लीज वॉच इट ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेरीज रिगार्डिंग दिस टॉपिक प्लीज फील फ्री टू गिव अस अ कॉल ऑन द नंबर डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इट्स बींग डिस्प्लेड ऑन योर स्क्रीन एट द मोमेंट एंड इफ यू आर वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन आर पी एम ई विद योर चैनल नंबर टेन then please raise your questions let me introduce you to our today's expert she is in our studio and she is miss ankita dureja welcome ma'am well thank you she is a tgd in chemistry from dav public school gurukram so let's uh, begin this discussion without wasting any more time and uh, because this is the fifth part let's just have a recap of the fourth part what exactly we did with what uh, we learned in the fourth part and then we'll begin with the present part so ma'am a quick review hello my dear young scientists so we'll have a quick recap of session 4 we studied about homologous series that is a group or a series of compounds each containing a characteristic functional group so the series were having similar chemical properties and the successive members differs by which unit ch2 unit we also studied about functional groups that is an atom or a group of atom which decides the properties of a carbon compound and you studied the most important functional group that was alcohol that is represented by oh which is a terminal group it has one free valency and the secondary suffix used was ol we also discussed some members that is methanol ch3oh ethanol c2h5oh and one task was given to you that you had to draw the structures of butanol and pentanol so kindly check your answers Butanol. Bute means there are four carbons and there is mandatory presence of OH group. You must have completed the valency of carbon with pending hydrogens, and this would have been the structure. And when you count number of bonds, it is fourteen. But you have to make sure there is one bond between OH. We have did we did this in the previous session. So this is the structure of butanol. Pentanol structure also you must have drawn that is five carbons mandatory presence of OH group and you must have completed the valencies of carbon with hydrogens and total number of bonds was seventeen. So this was all about your session four. Now we'll start discussing about present session and there are more functional groups which we have to study. So the second functional group which is there in our course is aldehyde which is represented with C double bond OH and the secondary suffix used is AL similarly carboxylic acid this is C double bond OOH secondary suffix is oic acid and ketone that is C double bond O the secondary suffix is ONE we'll quickly take up one by one so first we will take aldehydes aldehyde is c double bond oh it's a terminal group as you can see the electron dot there is one free valency here you can see hydrogen have shared one electron oxygen have shared two electrons and carbon valency is still not complete it is one free valency so it's a terminal group now when you represent this element now see this is your aldehyde group that is c double bond oh i have represented green with carbon white with oxygen and hydrogen with red see the real structure of this is in three dimension if you look like it is this this structure this is c double bond o this is hydrogen and this is one free valency but many of you must not be having this ball and stick model at home so we are doing it with clay right so this is our present structure where this is one carbon now this is my first member now when i want to write the structure and i want to complete the structure here one valency is free i can put oxygen no i cannot put oxygen why because oxygen valency is two it will not be a stable structure so if i put carbon then also it will not be a first member why because first member should have one carbon in the functional group already you have one carbon which is represented with green ball so in order to complete the structure i will put one hydrogen and what will be the formula that is h for this hydrogen c h o 
and when you count total number of bonds this is 1 2 3 and 4 now when i want to draw the second member of the series now you have to correlate with the session 4 that was your homologous series that is a difference of ch2 unit so now this is the first member if i add one CH2 unit, it will make your second member. So if I add CH2 unit in this, this will be your structure. Can you see? This is your structure. Now see, this is C double bond O, this is the second carbon. Now when I write the molecular formula of this, it will be CH3 CHO. So this is your second member. So when you count number of bonds, it is 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 and 7. This way you can form different members of the same group and that is so interesting to do. So when I write the name of these compounds, now that was having one carbon. So root word you have already done in previous sessions, it will be meth. And when you write the primary suffix, now it is all derived from in and al will be the secondary suffix. Similarly, if you write the name here, it is et, a and al. This way you can form the number of series of your compounds and if you look on the screen, you can correlate and you can form this kind of a table where you can put the functional group, you can form the structure formulas, you can write the root word, number of bonds and you can sum up quickly in one table. Now this was all about your aldehydes. As Next functional group is your carboxylic acid. So when we focus on carboxylic acid, it is C double bond O OH. So if you look at the three dimensional structure, it is somewhere of this sort C double bond O OH and this is your bond. But to represent in the two dimensional structure, we have this kind of a structure. So here, this is carbon, which is green ball, this is oxygen, this is oxygen and this is hydrogen. Now, when I want to make the first member, again, I cannot put oxygen because valency is 2. Again, I cannot put carbon. Why? Because it will be second member. To make my first member, I will simply add hydrogen. And what will be the formula now? It will be HCOOH. And when I write the name here, what I will write? I will simply write meth because there is one carbon, in because all were single bond. Now students can get confused here. Tanviji, dekhe, C double bond O. Jee. So there is double bond presence in between carbon and oxygen. Right. So students may get confused man, why we have not written in here. But you have to see the single bond or double bond or triple bond in between the carbons. This is the double bond which is present in between carbon and oxygen. So this double bond will not consider, we will only consider presence of single bond or double bond or triple bond in between two carbons. Okay. So here this is in because all are single bond and oic acid is the secondary suffix which we use. So this is methanoic acid. Same way if I want to make the second member, I will not do anything. I will simply add one CH2 unit and my things are ready. I have added one CH2 unit and this is my structure for the second member. You can see there are two carbons. So when I write the formula, I simply write CH3 COOH. And what will be the name? Two carbons. It is eth in because all are single bond, oic acid because it is the carboxylic acid group. So this way you can sum up your carboxylic acids also. Make the table and create your own structures with this clay and you'll really enjoy and the concepts will be clear within the seconds. Now our last functional group which we have to study is ketones and that is really important because it is little catchy statement there. What is it? Now this is ketone which is represented with C double bond O. Now when I represent this ketone, it will look like this. In three dimensional structure, it will look like this. This is C double bond O. These are two carbon valencies. But since we are drawing it in this clay form. So now this is carbon, this is oxygen. Now what is catchy here? Please see, when you focus on the electron dot structures here, carbon, oxygen is sharing two electrons, but carbon two valencies are free. You can see here, one valency is free here and one valency is free here. So now what should I put? Now students can guess. Now if students put hydrogen, let's suppose I put hydrogen. If I put hydrogen and hydrogen on these sides, 
but this is not ketone why because this is the structure of hcho only which is your aldehyde so you cannot put hydrogens somebody can say ma'am plate uh, one side put carbon and another side put hydrogen this is also not the correct structure why because now you have formed ch3 cho this is also your aldehyde that means when you have to start your ketones minimum of 3 carbons is required that means you have to make your functional group that is your ketonic functional group in between 2 carbons that is the most important point and that makes your C double bond O group non-terminal non-terminal means it should be in between 2 carbons so now when I start the series what I will do I will put 1 carbon like this and I will put another carbon like this to make this C double bond O non-terminal group. Can you see how beautiful it is looking? Yeah. So now this is CH3, C double bond O, CH3. So this is your first member. So kindly, students kindly note your ketonic group starts with N is equal to 3. So this is your first member. Now when you want to add second member, simply add CH2 unit. So you can just correlate with the table. This is your first member and this is your second member. And when it comes to name, the first member, three carbons. So the root word is prop. All are derived from single bond, double bond. I will not consider because it is between carbon and oxygen. So it is prop a own. Own is the secondary suffix which is used for ketones. So the name of the compound will be propanone. And if you count the number of bonds, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. 10. So this makes your studies very very simpler. Now one question arises because of the versatile nature of carbon you have different compounds of carbon. So it is mandatory for us to name these compounds. Agar hum name nahi denge it is very very difficult to identify the compounds right. Suppose Tanviji I ask you mm. you must be having a nickname. Yes. So everybody have that nickname. I also have a nickname. Mm. And you have an official name also with which the world knows you. Yes. Same way organic compounds also have nicknames. Okay. So the nickname of organic compounds are actually common names. Okay. Like we have done CH3COOH mm -hmm. that is your uh, ethanoic acid. The mm -hmm. common name is acetic acid which is actually found in vinegar which we use at home. Okay. Okay. So we have nicknames. Organic compounds also have nicknames that are common names. Mm -hmm. But... Suppose if I want to conduct an experiment and want to use any compound, I am in USA, I want to use any compound. So I will say that in India, this compound is used here, I don't know which name is. The compounds has to be universally accepted with the names. It should be such a name that if I use universally, I can use it. So, that official name is being given by IUPAC, that is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Okay. So this have given us a common platform which have given the names to the compounds and it is mandatory for us to learn chemistry. It is mandatory for us that we learn the rules how to write the nomenclature. But before studying that nomenclature, we will simply look at the sequence how that IUPAC nomenclature looks like. Okay. So basically this IUPAC nomenclature consists of four parts. Mm -hmm. The first part is your prefix. Prefix is being categorized as two, that is either your uh, substituents or your branches. There are two forms. First is your alkyl groups. Alkyl groups, I told you in the session, uh, previous session, that once you remove hydrogen from alkane, just as you can see this. This is my methane. If I remove one hydrogen, it will be methyl group. Same way if I form ethane, I remove one hydrogen, it is ethyl group. So this way, this is the prefix and uh, methyl, propyl, ethyl, these are used as a prefixes. I'll let you know in detail what are prefixes in the later slides. So when you talk about other kind of a substituent, that is halo group, halogen group. You use chloro for Cl, bromo for Br, iodo for I, fluoro for F. So this way you have done the prefixes. The second part is very very important that is the root word number of carbons if it is one meth if it is two eth if it is three prop you can see the bold ones yeah. so this is your second part of the IUPAC nomenclature 
then the most important part that is your primary suffix. You have to see whether the single bond is present between the two carbons or double bond or triple bond. If it is single bond, ane, double bond, ene, triple bond, ine. Then the fourth part is your secondary suffix. We have already discussed. It is related to your functional groups. Functional groups for alcohols, it is OL. For aldehydes, it is AL. Carboxylic acid is oic acid. And ketones, it is ONE. So this will be your skeleton of IUPAC nomenclature. These are the four parts in which your IUPAC nomenclatures will look like. Now we are going to start the most important part of the topic that is nomenclature of organic compounds. Now once you know the rules, it becomes very simpler to name the compounds. So the first rule of naming the compound is to find the root word. Root word means you have to count the number of carbon atoms. If you see the number of carbon atoms as the longest possible chain, then you select it. But we'll do with examples and we'll have more uh, clarity. clarity in the concepts, right? So I would like you all to focus here on this structure. Now, if I see it's a straight chain structure, yeah. Tanviji, how many carbons can you see here? Five. Five carbons. So, my root word will be pent. And all are single bonds. So, my primary suffix will be A. Mm -hmm. So, the simplest name of this compound becomes pentane. Now, what is this pent? This is my second part, which is the root word. Mm -hmm. And Third part is your primary suffix, which is ane. So this is the most simplest structure you have already done in your previous sessions. Now you have to focus on this structure. Students, can you see the second one? Is yes. Is it visible? Yeah. Okay. So now what, what is there? Once you have selected your longest chain, you have to number that chain. Suppose I have selected this longest chain. Whenever you have to select the longest chain in order to identify the root word, kindly make this kind of a circle, like circle here. This way you get a clarity of the longest chain. Okay. So this is my longest chain. This will decide my root word. How many number of carbons? Four. four. So my root word will be four, that is butte. Mm -hmm. But now you have to number this chain. Once you have to number this chain, you have to make sure that the substituent, now this is your substituent, can you see this alkyl group? Mm -hmm. Now this is of prefix part. This should get the lowest possible number. This is the rule of IUPSC. Suppose if I number it from this end, left to right, and if I number it from right to left. Now this methyl group, at when I number it from left to right, it is second position. When I number it from right to left, it is third position. So which is the lowest? Second. So this numbering will be selected and this numbering will not be selected. So now when I write the name of this compound, now methyl is your prefix, so it will be written in the first part. So this will be your name. Can you see? 2-methyl, that is second position, you have specified your alkyl group. Mm -hmm. This is your first part. Then butte, in the circle you have how many carbons? The root word is 4, so you have written butte. And ends for all the single bonds in between the carbons. So this way you can simply write the name of this particular compound. Now specifying position, now this second position specification is very, very necessary. Why? Suppose mother ne ghar mein kapre sukhaya and bache ko bola, कि आप अपनी शर्ट लेके आइए रेड शर्ट आपकी वहां ऊपर मैंने सुखाई हुई आप उसको लेके आइए सो बच्चा गया वो कंफ्यूज हो गया ढूंढ रहा है चारों तरफ अगर मदर पोजीशन स्पेसिफाई कर दे कि जाओ थर्ड वायर पर आपकी वो उस प्लेस पर मैंने तो उसके लिए बहुत इजी हो जाएगा सो स्पेसिफाइंग पोजीशन मेक्स द कंपाउंड सिंपलीफिकेशन एंड इट इज वेरी इजी फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड लोकेट द ग्रुप्स सो स्पेसिफाइंग द पोजीशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर यू कैन रिमेंबर दैट ओके ओके सो वी विल शिफ्ट टू नेक्स्ट up till now, we have done one kind of the alkyl group. You can see here, in this structure, you have uh, two CLs. So this is another type of prefix which is present. Mm -hmm. Now you have to select the carbon chain. Again, this is my longest carbon chain. I will circle it in this manner. Now I have to number it. Tanvi ji, aap bataye kahan se number kare? So that CL should get lowest number. Uh, towards the right. Yes. So I should write one here. Yes. Second third, 
fourth and fifth. So now when I name this compound, now chloro is your prefix which will be written in the first part. Mm -hmm. So this will be your name. Now I have written two, two times. Why? Because Cl is present on second position and two Cl's are present. Mm -hmm. So mentioning the position of both the Cl's is important. So it is 2, 2, di is used for two Cl placed here and chloro. So this entire becomes your first part, that is your prefix. Now in the main chain you have five carbons. So this is pent and all are single bonds. So it is A. So this is the structure name. Mm -hmm. Now when we talk about the next structure, Sometimes what happens, there is presence of unsaturation in your chains. Now when it's presence of unsaturation, that means you have presence of double bond or triple bond in the chains, then it is mandatory for you to take that double bonded chain in the main chain. Means if I want to name this chain now, please focus. Now here double bond is present. So now when I select the chain, I will make sure my root word chain have this double bond. And... Now the most important rule, somebody can say, ma'am, if I number this chain, from where should I number? This should get the lowest position as I told you just before. But you have to number this chain in a manner that your double bond should get the lowest position. At that moment, you will not see the substituent. If your main chain have double bond, then you will simply number it from this end because the priority is to number your double chain in the first position. Okay. So this is the numbering. So now if I name this compound, it is 3-methyl because it is the substituent which is of methyl type at mm -hmm. third position. Root word becomes pent because there are five carbons and ene is done because there is presence of double bond in between two carbons. So the name becomes 3-methyl pent 1-ene. Now when you talk about the next structure, now, this is also a catchy structure. Sometimes your functional groups can also be present. Now, when your functional groups are present in a compound, you have to focus students, where is it present? And when you are numbering the chain, the priority should get to that carbon which is having your functional group. Suppose in this, the longest chain which I can select is this. And here I will number from right to left. Why? Because the priority is of OH group. So I will number it in this way. And this is simple structure, five member. This is pentane because all are single bond. And at first position, OH group is present. And secondary suffix which is used for OH is OL. We have already done. So this is your second part. This is your third part of IUPAC. And this is your fourth part. But what suppose if position of this OS is changed, now I have to specify the position. If you can see in this last structure, this is your main chain. And when you number it, you have to make sure that OH gets the least position. So this is your name, which becomes 5 carbons pent, in because all are single bonds, 2 because the specification of the position is OH at second position and OL for the OH group. Sometimes what happens? Sometimes this kind of a structure comes where your functional group is not OH. You have different functional groups. Now you can see here this is the functional group which is present and this is of which type? C double bond O and this is one free valency which is occupied by this carbon chain. So this is your which structure? Aldehydic structure. But once you number the chain, now this is your longest chain possible. And you have to name it from functional group because you have to give them the priority. So when you number this chain, it is 5 carbons. Now N I have written because I have ignored the double bond is present between C and O. So I will not consider that double bond. I will simply consider the single bonds which is there in between the carbons. So I have written N. Now there is one more rule you have to focus here. All the functional groups which are starting from the vowels, just say aldehyde A, mm. carboxylic acid, oic acid that is O, mm. ketone that is O, mm. alcohol that is O. So they are starting from the vowels. Mm. So when you have to place the secondary suffix, you have to remove the E from the primary suffix and then you have to attach that vowel. Suppose students can get confused. I have written pent. This is A. Now this E has to be removed. Why it has to be removed? Because the functional group which you are attaching, it is having the vowel in the starting. 
Okay. So this name becomes pente null. Second part is your root word, third part is your ain, and fourth part is your functional group, that is your secondary suffix, which is represented with al. Now, if you have some attachment with the functional group, now this kind of a chain comes. Now, what happens? Now, in this particular chain, you have to number it. This is my longest chain, but you have to number it in a manner that functional group. Now, here br is also present, so you can get confused, ma'am. br should get the lowest number. No. First priority is to give the lowest number to the functional group. This way. So now, how many carbons in the main chain? Five. Five. So when I have to number this, it is at third position. So this is my prefix, 3-bromo. Mm -hmm. Pent because in the root word, there are five carbons. In because all are single bonded compounds. Mm -hmm. Al because the aldehyde group was present. So the this type of compound name is representing all the parts. First part, that is prefix. Second part, that is root word. Third part, that is primary suffix. And fourth part, which is your secondary suffix. And if you get the last structure like this, where you have more attachments, like you can see here, CH3 is also there. CL is also there. Functional group is also there. You will not have confusion. Simply make the longest carbon chain. Number that chain with the priority of functional group. Now, when you have to name the prefix, now there are two prefix, one is methyl and one is chloro. You will follow the alphabetical order to name it. Like C comes first, then M. Yes. So, first I will write chloro and then I will write methyl. But specifying position is very, very essential as I told in the, just now to you. So, this will be the name of the structure. 3 chloro, 3 methyl, pent because it is the root word, 5 carbons, oic acid, Obviously, ain because of the single bond and oic acid because of the secondary suffix. Now, my dear students, what have you learned in this session? You have learned about homologous series in the previous session. And this way, you have learned the three structures that is aldehyde group, your carboxylic groups, your ketonic groups. And you have studied the main rules of IUPSC that you select the first longest carbon for the root word. Then you have to see where the substituents are present. You have to number that chain. But you should see the numbering should be done in a manner that your substituent gets the lowest number. Then your third rule is if your functional groups are present, in the main chain you will include that functional group and you have to count. The number should be written first on the functional groups. And if you have double bonds, then you have to include those double bonds or triple bonds in your main chain. And when your functional groups are present, and the functional groups are starting with the vowels. You have to remove E from the primary suffix and you have to attach the secondary suffix and you have to form your structures. Same way, one task I am giving it to you. You have to draw electron. Students, you have already learned to draw electron dot structure. When you make the structure, you have to see one bond consists of how many electrons? Two electrons. So when you are drawing the structure of butanol, you have to make sure one bond is two electrons. So you remove one bond. Place two dots and complete the valency of carbon and you will simply make the structure in a very simple manner. Mm. So this is the task for you that you have to draw the electron dot structures of butanol, butanoic acid, butanone and you have to write the total number of bonds contained in that. At the same time, you have to also practice questions for your IUPAC nomenclature. I have given three structures to you. One is having some substituents. You can see the branching in the first part. Second part, you can see there is presence of double bond. You have to include that double bond in the main chain. And then you have to number the chain according to the priority of double bond. And the third, if you can see here, it is having three carbons. One carbon is there in the functional group. And Cl is basically done as a substituent. So you have to number the chain in a manner that functional group gets the least number. So I expect my viewers to do this homework. And in the next session, we will obviously uh, do the answers of these questions. Absolutely. So uh, with this, have we come to the end of this topic? Yes. Presently, we are to the end. Uh, if anybody having any doubts, so I am there to welcome the doubts. Absolutely. Send your doubts on our email ID, which is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. It was such an interesting session and I'm sure you loved it. Watch all the parts in continuation so you'll understand a lot better. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, my viewers. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers for once again for being with us and for learning so much about carbon and its compounds. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back with a Hindi class for all the 
10th class students again and the topic is going to be Manvi Karuna ki Divya Chamak Sarveshul Dayal Saxena. Thodi der mein hazir honge and uh, stay with us, don't go anywhere, take great care of yourself. Namaskar.